Hello everyone and once again welcome to Educational Leadership 626 Assessment and Evaluation of Learning. Uh, what I'd like to do here in this particular video is I'd like to go through the syllabus here so that you can see some of the information that we would have covered tonight had we been in class. Um, so I'm just going to pull this up in a Word document here and uh, basically just go through so that you can all see everything that essentially we would have covered throughout the night. Uh, so first of all, whoops, apologies about that. Uh, so first off, if you start on the uh, front page here of the syllabus, you will see that uh, my contact information is there. Note that my office number and cell phone number is there, as well as a way of getting a hold of me on Skype, as well as my email address. For those of you that have contacted me by email thus far, you'll note that I'm pretty quick at getting back to you via email. So that tends to be one of the better ways of getting a hold of me. Essentially, if I'm sitting in front of my computer at the time, I'll try to respond as I receive those emails. I should note that my office hours for this course are from 1 to 4 on Tuesdays, so immediately before class, or you can make an appointment. I'm in the office usually four or five days a week, so feel free if 1 to 4 doesn't work for you to uh, contact me and we can find a time that uh, will work for you. So moving right along, um, the next thing that you have here in the uh, syllabus is the course description, which is fairly standard. Uh, I won't go into it because we'll sort of get into the course. Um, to give you, I guess, sort of an overview sense of the course, essentially what we're looking at is schools and school districts generate a lot of data. How, as a school leader, and in particular an administrator, can you use that data for the improvement of your school? Now, that both includes the proficiency of the folks that, uh, that work at the school, but also in terms of increase in the learning that happens um, from the, by the students in the school. So that's sort of the, the, the general... Uh, look at the course. Um, I know it talks a little bit in there about statistics and there are a couple of weeks where we'll spend on statistics. Uh, those will actually be weeks that we spend primarily online and I'll talk a little bit about that when I get down to the schedule in a few minutes. Um, but rest assured we'll deal with them at a level that is useful to you. So we won't be essentially learning statistics for the sake of learning statistics. We'll be learning statistics in terms of not necessarily how to compute or how to do them, but when you're presented with statistical information, what does that mean and how can you interpret that? So you can see the, the core performance standards here that flow out of the course de description and the course rationale. You'll see the state standards or the ELCCs that are attached to this particular course. Uh, so obviously we've got you know standard 1.2, We've got standards 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3, and 2.4. So those ones will be ones that at the end of the course you'll be evaluated on as part of your field study project. Uh, now they won't include part of the grade for this course, but they will include part of the evaluation that we have for you that would be part of your 092 certification. Um, a couple of standard items that are in here for uh, policy-wise. The first one, obviously, is the information here about disability services. Uh, if you are a student that has a disability, uh, please make yourself uh, known to me, either through email or by speaking with me directly, because uh, if there are accommodations that you would like me to make for you or that I should be making for you, I'm more than happy to do that. I just need to know that. Um, and if I don't know, obviously, I, I can't do those kinds of things. Um, as I mentioned in the emails that I sent out, um, the bookstore has, I believe, started as of the fall of this year, ordering the 10th edition of the textbook. In all honesty, there is very little difference between the 10th and the 9th editions of the textbook in terms of the themes and the main material. The examples have primarily been updated. Uh, but for the most part, either edition of the book will do. So if you're able to pick the ninth up off of Amazon or secondhand a little bit cheaper than the 10th, by all means, feel free to use that edition. There isn't much difference. You'll note that in Blackboard, as you look in the content area, there are folders for each of the weeks. And in each of those, in some cases, there are both required and recommended readings that are there. So... Looking at um, the course evaluation, 
there are really sort of five things that you're going to be evaluated on as a part of your uh, as part of the the course and you'll note that um, a lot of it actually 55 percent of it works out to something to do with the field study project so the first 20 percent is basically pl active participation in the class uh, so this obviously encompasses things like attendance you'll note that we do a lot of small group and whole class activities we'll do a couple of online activities in weeks that we're not meeting your participation in those determines your participation grade now active participation doesn't necessarily mean that you talk a lot in your groups or you talk a lot in class active part being an active participant of a discussion also involves listening to what others have to say as a part of that discussion um, so it's important to to note that you know someone who dominates the conversation isn't necessarily someone who will definitely score well in this particular uh, category um, you know as a school leader you want to be just as good a listener as you do someone who sort of you know commands attention when you do speak and let's face it we all know those folks that um, you know talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and you know it doesn't take very long before we stop listening to those folks uh, so you know use that as a gauge as you're working your way through the course you'll note that in blackboard there are three course content assessments now these are quizzes that all of the um, ed leadership professors that teach 626 have developed as a way of testing the material that's in the textbook so testing your knowledge of of what's in that textbook and that's worth 25 percent of your grade and then the next three are all attached to the field study project so the first one is specifically the action plan that you put in place in your groups for conducting the field study project and downloading the data that you're going to need in order to complete the field study project so those two items are the first component the second component which is item number four is the actual content of the field study project that you submit so you're going to submit two documents to me in the end uh, one will be either a written report a narrative report or a PowerPoint as well as a specific action plan the content will be those two written documents and then finally um, there will be a power there will be a presentation that you will give um, at the end this will actually take place in the final class so during that final class in week 13 which I believe is the first Tuesday in October or sorry first Tuesday in April um, that first Tuesday in April which is our final class that will be when you actually essentially present your field study project to the class and that's worth 10 percent of your grade so a couple of assignment notes um, first of all make sure that your assignment um, uses APA formatting I am very particular about APA formatting and you know that's something that if you're not familiar with it I suggest that you um, go to Google and Google um, the online writing lab or OWL and APA they've got a wonderful online resource set up as a part of that organization uh, note the second item up to 20 percent of any assignment could be deducted for things like poor quality of writing, poor production, spelling, punctuation, grammar, um, as well as elements like organization, composition, layout, and style. You know, so these are all important things to take into account as you're putting together your assignment. In all honesty, what you want to do is I would have somebody proofread your assignments before you submit them. Um, when it comes to late work in all honesty for the most part I do not accept late work I understand that in some cases there are extenuating circumstances you know life happens to the best of us and if that were to happen to you at some point during the semester you'd want to contact me as soon as you're able and we can talk about it and figure out how to go about moving forward in terms of the course but as a general rule I do not accept late work all work will be submitted in blackboard uh, so even if you're not going to make it to class you can still upload your assignments to class um, as well when it comes to things like um, 
essentially makeup work or extra credit work or those kinds of things, that's not something that I, I believe in. Um, as you go through these assignments, one of the things I will try to do is if you want to submit things prior to the deadline to get feedback, I'm more than happy to look at them and provide as much feedback as time will allow. So take advantage of that. But, you know, once the deadline has come and you've submitted the assignment, that's pretty much the way it is. Now, in all honesty, one of my philosophies of teaching is that I believe in mastery learning. So for any assignment that you submit on time, after I've graded it and returned it back to you, you have up to seven days to make revisions to that assignment based upon the feedback that I gave you, and then resubmit it to obtain up to half of the score that you lost. So for example, say you got a 70% on an assignment, and you went and made changes and revisions to the assignment and submitted it a second time and your second submission would have scored a 90% or 20% more than your original submission, you would get half of those 20 marks or 10% back which would give you a final grade on that assignment of 80%. Now unfortunately this doesn't apply to that final field study project and the reason for that is because the university requires that we actually submit our grades for the course 48 hours after the final class has taken place or 48 hours after the final exam has taken place. Now in our case because we don't have a final exam that means 48 hours after class which obviously doesn't give me enough time to grade the assignment, return it to you, give you time to make those revisions and then submit it back to me so that I could grade it again for a final grade. So when it comes to the field study project you'll note that we've built a lot of time into the schedule to work on it and I'd take advantage of that so that you could submit things in advance of the deadline and get feedback and I'm willing to look at them as many times as you're willing to submit them to me for that kind of feedback. Um, a couple of other policies that I want to point out to you. Uh, obviously, there's an attendance policy. Um, basically, my policy is that I expect you to be in class. If you're unable to be in class, um, I allow for one absence, regardless. It's you know that it has no fault, no penalty attached to it. So, of the 13 classes, well, 12 that we will be physically having after this because obviously we've lost the first one. So of the 12 remaining classes, the ones that you're expected to come to um, Fairfield for, ones you're expected to come to campus for, you are allowed to miss one and I really, it doesn't matter to me why you miss it. Um, in, for that matter, you don't even have to tell me in all honesty. Um, just know that I expect you to you know, be in contact with your colleagues so that you can make up any material that you may have missed and obviously it'll also work into the part of the participation grade but you will not lose any marks simply by missing one class however if you miss more than one class essentially I will drop you five percent for each additional class missed off of your final grade that is five percent off of your final grade so it's important to come to class. Now again, like with the late assignments, in some cases I understand that life happens and you know there are things that are these extenuating circumstances that are simply beyond our control that would prevent you from coming to class. And if you find yourself in that kind of situation, again, contact me as soon as you're able to and we can make some arrangements to figure out essentially how we can allow you to complete the material in class and not have you adversely affected by something that you really had no control over whatsoever and had no ability to foresee whatsoever. Um, so some information there about the academic integrity policy here at um, Sacred Heart University as well as uh, some information about plagiarism that I'd encourage you to read through. Um, this last point that you see here under course policies is an important one. Um, it's uh, essentially that you know the class for the most part will be discussion based. 
Uh, typically what we will do is we will go from a small group discussion to a large group discussion, usually around some guided questions that I'll put up on the board for you. In order for that kind of environment to work, essentially you've got to understand that, you know, everyone in there has opinions and in some cases those opinions are going to be well founded and based upon solid information and in all honesty some cases they're not um, but regardless of which of the two ends of that spectrum they fall upon people should be free to express those opinions and they shouldn't be fearful of speaking out in class and you know one of the things that I will say is that you know, I will play devil's advocate at times. I will take extreme positions at times. Not necessarily because I believe in those particular things, but as a way of trying to encourage the discussion or to try to bring people around to a specific uh, point or to get some information out into the open. Um, and, you know, I ask you not to hold that against me in much the same way that I won't hold things against you and I would hope that you wouldn't hold things against each other that are said during the discussions because it's only when we can really, you know, have those open discussions that are, you know, people aren't worried about hurting others' feelings and aren't worried about saying the wrong thing that we can really sort of get at some of the, the meatier issues. Um, on the syllabus, again, you'll note that there's some information there about the Connecticut Administrator's Test. Uh, obviously, the course that you're in now is one of the courses that leads to the school improvement module and the simulation, the CAT simulation that we'll do this semester helps hopefully prepare you for uh, doing well on that CAT, uh, that CAT exam. And we'll talk a little bit about that. I've actually, in the fall, had an opportunity to score the CAT exam, so I can talk to you a little bit uh, when we get to the simulation portion about that experience and how that went. Um, one of the things to note there, uh, and particularly with the school improvement module, which is the one you're, you're preparing for now, there are three courses that you need to complete before you take the school improvement module. That's 605, 626, and 654. In addition to that, you should also complete um, the... Um, we offer a, a preparation, a CAT preparation uh, course that um, is available to you. And for those of you that um, have actually uh, taken, you know, uh, taken it already, you should be able to tell your colleagues about how useful it was. But that's also a, a, a requisite that you need to take in order to, or before you should do these modules. Because uh, we want you to have success on these modules. We don't want you to go through your coursework here at Sacred Heart and then not have success on the certification exam. Because in all honesty, that's a waste of your time and, and really a waste of our time as well. Um, you know, so we want to see you do well. We want to make sure that you have success. So by, you know, following these specific procedures, that should allow you to have success. Now, a couple of things. Um, looking at the schedule, first, obviously, we're not in class tonight on the 21st of January to do a lot of this stuff during class, so we're going to try to do it online. I will see you in class next week, um, the 28th, in which we're going to have, you know, a couple of books from the, or a couple of chapters from the textbook, as well as a couple of reports that I'd like you to, uh, skim through and I say skim through so what I'd like you to do is make sure you read those two chapters from the textbook you know fairly carefully because the content assessments are going to be specifically tied to those uh, the two reports that are there this is something that you want to skim we're going to use them as discussion pieces so it's not like you're going to be tested on the material here it's having enough familiarity with what's in those reports so that we can talk about them but not necessarily sit down and really scour through them uh, you'll see the next three or four classes we're actually in the classroom however when we get to the 25th of February you'll note it's the first one that we're doing um, with the, the first statistics week we're doing and you'll also notice that it is an online session so what you'll find during those weeks, and during session five, I will give you sort of a heads up as to what I will expect, uh, but it'll actually kind of be like this week now. So there will be some videos that you'll watch. I'll post some things in the discussion forum for you to respond to and activities for you to participate in. But 
It'll be one of those things where, um, you know, actually coming to class won't be required. And you'll note that both session six and session seven are online. In session seven, I say it's online optional because one of the things we'll be doing that week is we'll be doing some of the Excel stuff uh, for your field study project. But again, we've got videos and handouts that would walk you through that. So when we get to that week, if you feel confident in your ability to have all of that material done, then um, there's no need for you to come during that particular week. Uh, session 8, which is March the 11th, is when we get back in class, so two weeks out. And um, we'll actually be doing uh, the CAT simulation, uh, that particular class. Then uh, session nine, actually, I'll be at a conference that particular week, so we're not going to specifically meet that week. Um, and I'll give that's essentially an opportunity to get to work on your field study project. And you'll note that again, leading up to that end, um, when we get to that April eighth session, that you know, of the three weeks leading up to that, two of those classes not meeting. Now. For April 1st, I'll actually be here. I'll be available in the classroom. If groups want to come and meet and work through their field study project or individuals want to come in and get some feedback on their field study project, I'm more than happy to do that. So I will be in the building and around and available to consult with you um, uh, during the session 11 or April 1st. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about the session for March the 18th because, again, I'll be at a conference, uh, the Society for Information uh, Technology and Teacher Education that particular week. Um, and then, obviously, in the last class, I've got, uh, you know, there's a couple of other uh, readings, and I'll say that those you'll want to skim again, and leading up to the each of the weeks, I'll sort of remind you that, you know, these ones aren't ones to read carefully, they're ones to sort of skim through, because after you do your field study presentations, then we'll have sort of a little closing discussion uh, about things, and um, that'll be the course. So that's basically your schedule, that's the syllabus. Um, one of the things I would strongly encourage that you do is after you've read through the syllabus, after you've watched this video, if you have any specific questions about the syllabus, please email me. Um, we will probably spend about five minutes on this in the next class so that I can basically sort of really just say, does anyone have any questions about the syllabus? And assuming no one does, we'll just move right on. Um, but... For the most part, you know, let's try to get this taken care of this week. So after watching this video and after reviewing the syllabus, if you do have any questions, please contact me.